Hello and good morning, dear friends, and welcome to our 100 Days with God program. And today is August 5, and it's our fourth day, day four of this program. Time check 4:33, so we're advanced of two minutes earlier of two minutes than yesterday yesterday we started at 4.35 and so our study this morning uh, we'll focus on chapter 4 of the book of Psalms but before going further let us bow our heads for prayer oh gracious loving Father in heaven we ask you once again this morning in our study to this program 100 days with God we're asking for the wisdom and through the agent of the Holy Spirit that it will be guided as we read and discuss things and whatever we can see and whatever things that you will impress us in this chapter 4 of the book of Psalms thank you Lord for your son in prayer in Jesus name we pray Amen. And this chapter consists of eight verses. Now we begin to read, and let me remind again that this is from a New International Version translation. Verse 1, answer me when I call to you, O my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. How long, O men, verse 2, will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Verse 3, know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call to him. Verse 4, in your anger do not sin. When you are on your bed, search your hearts and be silent. Verse 5, offer right sacrifices and trust in the Lord. Verse 6, many are asking who can show us any good. Let the light of your face shine upon us o lord verse 7 you have filled my heart with greater joy than when their grain and new wine abound and last verse verse 8 i will lie down and sleep in peace for you alone o lord that you dwell in safety now beginning in verse 1 answer me when i call to you O my righteous god give me relief from my distress so this verse and be merciful to me and hear my prayer. This is David talking to God in prayer. This is a line of those words that David was pleading with God for something. And of course, part of this in verse 1 probably kind of, yeah, David was in distress, he was frustrated, and so he has nothing to call upon during the time of his trouble but God. So we need to remember that one, dear friends. A famous king in the land of Israel, and who have killed tens thousands of enemies, 10,000 enemies compared to King Saul who has, who have killed only like around a thousand enemies when they were together in the battle and David have done 10 times bigger. But we're talking here about a king who is famous, who is strong and whom the bullies in the surrounding nations are trembling upon hearing the name of David. But he, when he was alone, he was nothing before God, but he cried and asked for mercy. And he said, give me relief from my distress. Right now, all around the world, I think there are only a few individuals who are not distressed, who are not frustrated, but most of us do. And the kind of example that David have presented to all of us today is to come to God in prayer and humble ourselves 
regardless of our status here on this earth. We are all nothing and we are all equal. Maybe in the sight of men there are wealthy, rich, billionaires, millionaires and there are these guys who are really poor, who belong to the challenge level of financial stability, below average, but in the eyes of God, we're all equal. You and I are precious in the sight of God, that we are the reason of his death on the cross of Calvary, that once again, this hopeless nation living on this earth will be given a chance to live with him for eternity when we come to him in full faith. And that is why David is giving us this reminder. What an example that David have done for us. Verse 2, how long, O oh men, will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? This one here, the first question, how long, O men, will you turn my glory into shame? So there are people probably in his, uh, in, in the courtyards, because he was a king, there was probably like people who are plotting against him and probably a continuation of chapter 3 of the, of the book of Psalms that we have studied yesterday. And that is why the, David have this question to himself and asking clarifications and he wants to clear his mind and that is why he come into the garden of prayer with God and the next question how long will you love delusions and seek false gods this could have a lot of uh, possibility possibilities it might be like people who apostatize before they worship God and now they're worshiping themselves or someone else, money, possessions, or whatever. Or how long will you have love delusions and seek false gods? So this could really describe about someone who apostatized and David was so worried about that because to him, we are a godly nation, Israel. God has chosen us to be the leader to represent the bullet nations that we have a living God. And now here, verse three, know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call to him. So this word set apart, is, it's a really um, like a term being used in the sanctuary. But here in verse 3, that know that the Lord has set apart the godly for him, for, set apart the godly for himself. So meaning there is really a distinct difference. There is an absolute distinction between a man who is doing good and a man who is doing bad. A man who is doing good is following the footsteps and the will of God and obeying his will and the direction that he is passing through is a direction that is directly from God. But a man who is doing on his own, so there is really a clear distinction between these two things that I have presented here. So according to verse 3 and verse 4, In your anger do not sin when you are on your bed, search your hearts and be silent. So this is heavy. In your anger do not sin. We can be angry to someone, but we need to be careful that we will not do sin. So this is really a big thing. It's, it's a broad and it will be a quite long time of discussion in this verse alone. In your anger, do not sin. So meaning you should not hurt someone, especially physically or maybe mentally. I failed that one many times. In your anger, do not sin. This is really a challenge. And this is my weakness. Me in the camera, it looks like uh, a cool, a chill guy, but it's really different in, my re in reality. 
So it, it's, it's a challenge, but I keep on praying to God that I might overcome this through his grace and his righteousness. Search your hearts and be silent. So it's better we need to shut up our mouth during the time that we don't understand what, what's going on in our surroundings. And then offer the right sacrifices and trust in the Lord. So David kept telling us again and again, trust in the Lord, offer right sacrifices. This one is all about a total reverence and worship to God. It's not about sacrifices that we have learned from the Old Testament times where they offered bulls. They offered bulls and lambs and sheep to offer to God and to like ease their suffering, something like that. But it's not about that. Offer right sacrifices today. We are giving our heart without reservation to him and obey his will, worship him, and have faith in him, and then trust in the Lord. So offer right sacrifices and trust in the Lord. These uh, two phrases that is combined in one sentence has the same meaning and it interact to one another. It's about a total reverence to God and trusting his will. Verse 6, many are asking, who can show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. So there's, there's a question here. Many are asking, who can show us any good? So probably these guys are asking uh, those individuals who apostatize in verse 2. How long will you, will you love delusions and seek false gods? And now they're asking in verse 6, many are asking, who can show us any good? <laughs> So of course, I was in my depressing moments. I was depressed, stressed, and distressed in the past years and months. And still I'm struggling and recovering right now. But I'm glad that this 100 Days with God program tried to help me to be lifted up again and make me a whole individual again through God's grace. And I'm happy for that. And now we're still in day four. So what could be the blessings that God can afford to me personally once we achieve the, this 100 days with God program? And there will be more after this program. And we need to remember that. And I hope that you will continue to follow us in our journey here. And who can show us any good? That's my same question as well when I question God. Lord, if you are really a God, a living God and show, show me any good thing because I couldn't I could not see any good thing right now all I can see it's all is all these bad situation challenging condition that I do not know how to overcome people who apostatize in verse 2 now questioning and then David replied let the light of your face shine upon us O Lord let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. Meaning, David is pleading to God, Lord, please show, show us, show to them, to these guys who apostatize, who are mislead because of the convincing words of someone they listen to. Please give them some something for them to really see that you are a real God. Show us. Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. So David is asking God that somehow God can use him to be an instrument that these guys who started not believing God will come back again into the fold. And in Verse 7, you have filled my heart with greater joy than with when the grain and new wine abound. You have filled my heart with greater joy than when the grain and new wine abound. When there's an abundance heart, when there's when there is an abundant harvest of grain and new wine increase in the in the old 
in the ancient of days, then it's it's really people are really feasting. They're really celebrating God's goodness, celebrating everything because new wine increase and the fresh grain harvest just arrived. It's it's this thing to the people in the ancient of times during the time of the Israel during the time of the Israelites when David was a king until after him when new grain and new wine abound this is something like today it's like when you won an Olympic uh, championship or it's really a big thing to them that is why David uses this term, this analogy, their grain and new wine about. But David said, you have filled my heart with greater joy. Just imagine that one. Still, the thing that can give David more joy, greater joy, is to be with God and to be connected with him. Not the earthly possessions. Verse 8. I will lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. So he ended this chapter 4 with a confirmation. That he has nothing to think about. He can lie down and sleep in peace. Because for you alone, O Lord, make me do all the safety. Still, God provide the deliverance, providing the protection he needs. And how God blessed and guided David all throughout his reign as a king in Israel. David was a king. He was no ordinary man. He was a king. He was not a peasant. He was not like a common man though he became a soldier prior to his um, calling as a king but even he was a king he was still a soldier during a war a commanding in chief but we need to remember you youtube friends dear friends out there that even the status of david is really different from us we're all common people and him was a king but it doesn't discuss here about the status David here came to God in prayer David here talked to God in prayer not as a king but as a sinner and if we look at it if God have blessed David guided David, helped David to be lifted up during his depressing time, depressing moments when he was frustrated, when he was distressed. God delivered him and provided the protection and the peace and comfort he needed. If all these privileges were given to David according to his personal experience, then there is no doubt that God cannot do it to us today. No matter what situation you are in, if David have given us these words, how God have blessed him and guided him and protected him, then that God of David will be the same God who will be with us today in our time of struggles, in our time of our frustrations, in our time of those distressing moments, in our time that we fail, in our time that we get confused, in the time that we doubt his goodness, in the time that we don't understand what's going on in our surroundings, then there is this God of David who is still going, traveling, guiding, and protecting with us every single day of our lives. But 
How can we feel his presence? We must have to come into the garden of prayer with no reservation in our hearts, in full faith, and then confess that we are all sinners and that is in need of his grace and his righteousness. And the moment that we are sincere and honest in coming to God in prayer, then in a gradual way, not in a magic, but in a gradual way, God will help us to be strengthened. And he will give us thoughts about peace and comfort, thoughts about forgiveness, thoughts about being kind to one another, thoughts about how dependent we are and how totally helpless we are without his guidance and his righteousness. So I hope brothers and sisters, dear friends, that we all understand something and we all get something from here in this chapter four of the book of Psalms. And again, thank you for watching. And before we end at this discussion, I may invite you to a prayer. Gracious Lord, thank you once again for this opportunity to learn your words. And thank you for the wisdom. And may you help us and guide us each day of our daily tasks that we are complying, that we will be doing things in accordance to your will. Thank you, Lord, that you will bless all the people out there who are watching. We do not know, maybe after five years, after 10 years from now, there will be someone out there who will be needing these words from you, Lord. And this personal devotional study might be a blessing to him, to her, to all of them out there. And thank you once again that you will grant all our requests and we submit everything into your hands in the precious name of Jesus we pray amen so dear friends if you love to or if you consider supporting this channel in any form you can go down to the description box below and there's further details that are giving uh, place in there and if in case if you have missed our day one, day two, and day three of this program, 100 Days with God, then you can go down as well to the description box below and I place all the links you needed. And again, thank you for watching. Stay tuned. There will be more. See you all tomorrow.